Let's start with the uh, Toronto uh, Columbus game. Martin Jones, the, the Leaf goaltending was a huge issue coming in. They'd given up three or more in seven of nine, and Jones is a great period. Well, 15 saves. Like, you know, there's a lot of talk about making Toronto's defensive play better. They, you know, it was an up and down game. You know, Jen, you talked in the pregame. There's a lot of chances in Toronto's games both ways, and there were some here. And, you know, it's really amazing. Martin Jones gets signed as goaltender insurance at the start of the year. They put a little bonus of $100,000 right at the beginning of October so that if any team signs him they're going to have to pay him like that little bit of bonus or excuse me take him on waivers they have to pay that a, a smart little poison pill they put there he clears waivers and now with wool out and Samsonov really struggling Jones is basically saving this point of the season for Toronto and another bit of value that Jones offers is is everybody plays better when they're comfortable and they have a good friend there so the, the Morgan Riley's best friend the last few years was Kerfoot they grew up together, North Vancouver guys, same birth year. Kerfoot leaves this year. He goes to Phoenix, and now Martin Jones signs. He's one of his other best friends from the North Shore, when, uh, it's not North Shore, when it comes to Hollyburn, but they skate together, they train together. And just having that familiarity and having that friendship sometimes allows someone to play their best. Obviously, Morgan Riley's having an exceptional year as well for the Leafs. Right. Well, another guy who's having an exceptional year is Austin Matthews. So he's been a big storyline throughout this season. But also another little smaller storyline was the fact that they were reuniting Marner and Matthews on the same line. And, and they were buzzing right from the start of the first finding each other. But this is just a beautiful goal. Look at the time and the patience that Marner has, the fake, the deception, and Matthews. This is what you talked about, Kevin, in the pregame show about Matthews' ability to find that space. And it's the combination of Marner's intelligence and his patience to wait for just the right moment. He knew where Matthews was that entire time, but waits for just the right moment. Matthews was ready with a stick, just a small windup to bury that one. He now has his 27th already of the season. You know, 10 days from now, about they name their first 32 All Stars, one from each team. I think it's a pretty safe bet that Matthews is going to be Toronto's representatives. You uh, touched on this in the pregame show. He never takes a penalty despite the number of times he steals pucks. So the guy in our ear is Brian Spear. Brian Spear is the one that found out this stat when he looked this week. Zero penalty minutes this year. We haven't talked about this at all. And it's amazing because I would think he'd have more of these minors from how many times he reaches in, lifts other players' sticks, retrieves the puck. Him and Nyes, I've talked about them all year, two of the best. And this is another example, again, having a good stick to Defensively, breaking that puck up, going the other way. But just the technique and keeping the stick blade on blade on the ice, it never even gets anywhere close to the hands. That's the reason he has no penalty minutes. So, yeah, maybe Rocket, all-star for sure, according to Elliot. And then maybe Lady <laughs> Bing as well. And then just, just keep continue to watch him. Like, that is such a skilled play. Turning his blade around and scooping it. It is so easy for that stick to ride up. Hit a guy in the face, hit him in the hands, anything. And not only did he gets the puck, but then gets possession and is looking to go. You see the hop in his step to looking to get in the offensive zone right away. Conversely. Well, I've been watching Brady Kachuk like a lot of people. He's one of the most fun guys in the league to watch, but he's on pace for 255 penalty minutes. We haven't had a number anywhere close to that in a decade. And, uh, you know, last year's leader was Pat Maroon. He had 150. And there was a time, like when his dad played, Keith had 255 penalty minutes, his most, his biggest year. That was okay. Like there were, there was Brendan Shanahan, 100 points and 200 penalty minutes. Now it's really weird to see. And most of his fights, and this one was a little bit earlier in the game, it was 1-1 here. But most of his fights come when Otto was down late in a really frustrating season. You can tell he's blowing off steam. And there's always a fine line here between a player like him wanting him to be aggressive and wanting him to be great but I'm wondering if Otto was asking him to dial it down a bit. I, I think this is more of a reflection of his teammates. Like, he, we know he's fiery. And, and the Dumba fight was different. I think he got hit. He didn't like it. He's sticking up for himself. But to your point, when he's fighting, when they're down, why is somebody else not beating him to the punch? No pun intended. Why is he the one that, ha as the captain, their best player, best scorer, why is he the one that looks around, no one else is doing it, I'm going to do it? Why can't somebody beat him to the punch on their team? But also, maybe it's an evolution for him in terms of learning to lead in different ways. And that's been a big staple for him in terms of the intensity or energy. But maybe it's just adding a little more to his repertoire as a leader to not put them down in various ways. Actually, things. Jacques Martin on the pregame show did touch on finding the guys the role they belong in. Uh, mm -hmm. That's really going to be his job. Okay, Josh Norris is having a great run here. Uh, he is. So he's one guy that's scored in five straight now. And if you look at some of, of his abilities and tendencies, very similar to a couple of guys we showed in the pregame show, Matt. 
Matthews and Bester, who are leading the league in scoring. And this is what they do well, the catch and release. And that's what we saw Norris do here in the first, but also just the time with the puck. Misses connecting on his initial pass, but there's an awareness for him on where everybody is. And I love the touch on the pass is up to the point, ends up being the chicken and goal in the end of it. But it's Norris with the intelligence, the smarts, the patience. And then for him, he was on the PK and had a good uh, heads up play, but unfortunately they got scored on. But his next shift out shows the resiliency and the confidence and gets the nice goal for now five, five in a row. Blue Jays are looking for offense. Mm -hmm. Yes, Norris can hit. Good hitter for sure.